Hi again, we're going to be talking about upper and lower bounds of measurements again. And this time we've got two ropes with uh, lengths 36 and 23 metres. Both have been measured to the nearest metre. So what are the upper and lower bounds of their lengths? Well, rope A is in between 35.5 and 36.5. This lower value being its lower bound, upper value being its upper bound. What about B? Oh, well, it's in between 22.5 and 23.5. Lower bound, upper bound again. Now, this time we're going to look at some calculations with these values to see uh, what happens then. What we want is the upper and lower bounds for the two values added. Well, what's the lower bound going to be over here? Well, it's going to be the two lowest possible values. Shortest possible A, shortest possible B. It's going to be those two added. And what about the upper bound? Well, that's if you have the longest possible of each rope added together, 36.5 plus 23.5, giving us those values. Those are the lower and upper bounds for A plus B. What about subtraction? Now, this is slightly more tricky. First of all, what's the lower bound? What's the smallest difference there could be between A and B? Well, if we take the smallest value of A and we take away the largest possible value of B, that's going to give us the smallest difference. What about the largest difference? Well, if we take away the largest value of A, if we use the largest value of A and take away the smallest value of B, that's going to give us the biggest difference. So the bounds for A minus B are those two. 12 and 14. 12 is the smallest possible difference between the two lengths. 14 is the largest possible difference between the two lengths. Let's now look at multiplication. And to do that, we're going to look at the area of a rectangle. Now this rectangle has two measurements, height and width, 6.4 and 11.7. Then centimetres measured to the nearest millimetre, which is to the nearest point 0.1 of a centimetre. And we're interested in the area of this rectangle, which is the width times the height. What are the upper and lower bounds of the area of the rectangle? Well, first of all, let's look at the individual measurements. The width is in between 11.65 and 11.75, and the height, 6.35, 6.45. Those are the lower and upper bounds of those two measurements. Now, when we multiply them, to get the smallest possible value of the multiple, we take the two smallest values, the lower bound and the lower bound, multiply them together. That gives us the lower bound of W times H. And if we take the two largest values together, multiply them, that gives us the two largest values. So the area, WH, is in between those two values, which if we choose to round to, say, Four significant figures gives us an answer like that. OK, division. Now, division is, is tricky, and I've chosen a slightly tricky example here. I've got height and width of a right-angled triangle, 4 centimetres and centim 7 centimetres. And I'm interested in the angle there, the angle X. What are the lower and upper bounds for the angle X? Well tan x is h divided by w, using some simple trigonometry. So, what we're interested in here is h divided by w. So we're dividing. We want lower and upper bounds of our division this time. Well, h is in between 3.5 and 4.5, w between 6.5 and 7.5. So tan x, what's the smallest possible value of tan x? Well, that's, it's h over w, so it's going to be the smallest possible value of h divided by the largest possible value of w. And what about uh, the largest possible value of tan x? Well, it's going to be the largest possible value of h divided by the smallest possible value of w. So there we are, like that. So tan x is in between those two values, and so the angle is in between those two values, uh, which would normally round to something like, say, one place of decimals to give us an answer somewhere like that. 
Notice that the difference between these two angles is really quite a lot uh, because you know changing these values by a uh, half a centimeter uh, is going to make a, quite a difference to this angle. So let's summarize the four things that we need to know. If A is in between its lower bound and its upper bound, and B is in between its lower bound and its upper bound, that's what these symbols mean, then when you add them, you add the two lower bounds and you add the two upper bounds. That gives you the new lower and upper bound for A plus B. For A minus B, to get the smallest possible value, take the smallest possible value of one and take away the largest possible value of the other. And you swap them over to get the largest possible value of the difference between them. Multiplication is straightforward again. The two lowest values multiplied give you the lowest value. Two larger values multiplied give you the largest value. But division is complicated again because to get a small division you take a small number divide it by a large one. To get a large division take a large number and divide it by a small one. So those four are principles that you should learn. Notice that uh, addition and multiplication are straightforward but subtraction and division, well, they involve a little bit of swapping around.